Anime, my unique skill makes me up even at level 1. Episode 5 begins with Emily enjoying her time cooking in their new rented home while waiting for Ryota to return from the dungeon. On the other side, Ryota, who is exploring the Nihonium dungeon, encounters a new monster in the form of a mummy. Running out of bullets, he feels pressed and decides to fight the mummy barehanded, easily defeating it. After defeating the mummy, he obtains a drop item called Seed of Speed from it. Ryota realizes that he can fight monsters on the first floor of Nihonium without needing his weapons. While feeling bored at the Adventurer's Guild office, Ryota is approached by a handsome man and two beautiful women. The man approaches him and recognizes Ryota as the person he has been looking for. He challenges Ryota to an arm wrestling match, intrigued by Ryota's strength after witnessing him slap a muscular man who was about to attack Erza earlier. The man also catches the attention of the two women accompanying him. Feeling intimidated, Ryota accepts the challenge due to the man's confidence and the beauty of the women. The match swiftly unfolds, with Ryota overpowering Neptune, the leader of the Neptune family, a powerful adventurer's group. Neptune invites Ryota to join their group, but he declines, opting for a peaceful life with Emily. Suddenly, Eve arrives at Ryota's place for a meal, surprising him by appearing without any noticeable presence. Emily is amazed that Ryota was recruited by the Neptune family, seeing him as a hero. Lost in thought on Nihonium's first floor, Ryota imagines himself as a true hero. He encounters a group led by Princess Margaret, who are experimenting with a Pandora's box to obtain the wind element after defeating a skeleton. They enter the box automatically. One of the princess's aides realizes Ryota is an adventurer and gives him a Pandora's box to try, suggesting that he informs others in the Adventurer's Guild to collect monster drops automatically. Realizing something, Ryota attempts to use the Pandora's box to summon monsters within Nihonium for battle, in order to collect bullets for emergencies. He successfully summons a lot of zombies outside Nihonium and collects bullets without needing to throw monsters out of the dungeon. Emily arrives at Nihonium, pushing a magical cart, and is confused by Ryota's experimentation to obtain new bullets. She's surprised by the appearance of zombies and mummies outside the dungeon. Ryota quickly defeats the zombies and mummies, obtaining new bullets in the process. He gets fire element bullets with red casings and white bullets of unknown use. Ecstatic about the success of his experiment, he gathers three sacks of bullets, one sack of ice bullets, one sack of fire bullets, and one sack of white bullets. Impressed by his experimental results, Emily senses an unusual cold aura, realizing it's a sign of an impending magical storm. Upon arriving at the Adventurer's Guild office, Ryota encountered Erza. Erza inquired about Emily's whereabouts, and Ryota explained that she was out shopping. Due to the effects of the magical storm, all food supplies from monster drops became scarce, and they had to wait for the storm to subside. The magical storm had a significant impact on adventurers who relied on magic as their main weapon, and it also affected the dungeon environment. Many magic-dependent adventurers had to take a break, as they couldn't function without their magical abilities to fight monsters. After Erza explained the situation to him, Ryota overheard someone asking for help because their companion was trapped in the Silicon Dungeon. In that dungeon, Adventurers who didn't use magic would face great difficulty since most of the monsters there were resistant to physical attacks from conventional weapons. Erza recognized the person seeking help as Reyes, a new adventurer who had come to Sekro City along with their companion Rosa, who was stuck in the Silicon Dungeon. The adventurers in the guild office couldn't provide assistance because their attacks would prove futile against the monsters inside the Silicon Dungeon. It seemed Reyes had been late to realize that the magical storm had enveloped almost the entire city, including the dungeon. Neptune suddenly appeared and informed everyone that they should avoid the Silicon Dungeon, even including those who didn't use magic. It seemed that Reyes might not be rescued in time, but recalling Emily's words that he was a hero, Ryota decided to step in and help Reyes, even though he had no idea what awaited him there. Reyes informed Ryota that Rosa was on the third floor of the Silicon Dungeon and hurried off before it was too late. Carrying only a limited supply of bullets in his pocket, he didn't realize that there were numerous monsters within, likely depleting his ammunition. Meanwhile, Emily, assuming Ryota was still in the guild office, was shocked to find only her Pandora's box and magical cart left behind as he had gone to save Rosa. Ina, Erza's senior at the Adventurer's Guild, informed Emily that Ryota was in trouble because he had entered the Silicon Dungeon alone without sufficient bullet supplies. Panicking, Emily understood the characteristics of the dungeon and rushed to catch up with him. Eve, 
who had unintentionally overheard, also joined Emily to head to the Silicon Dungeon. As non-magic users, they had to navigate through the dungeon without engaging the monsters, focusing solely on reaching Ryata, who was in dire straits due to running out of elemental bullets. Running alongside Eve, Emily remembered Ryata's caring nature, much like his mother's, always thinking of others and helping them. When Emily was young, her mother often took her to explore dungeons and help groups of adventurers who were struggling due to their insufficient strength to fight the monsters within. After defeating the remaining monsters, Emily's mother would lecture the adventurers about taking unnecessary risks and invite them for drinks after the battle. On one occasion, Emily's mother assisted a group of adventurers who were fleeing from a dragon that was waiting for her. Although she managed to defeat the dragon, Emily's mother collapsed from the pain of the dragon's attack. Tearfully, Emily assured her mother that all the adventurers were safe and she reminded Emily not to cry. Emily carried her mother out of the dungeon, as she was too weak to continue and asked Emily if she would continue to explore dungeons. Emily, now having a strong partner like Ryata, decided to support her mother with all her strength. Cornered, Ryata finally encountered Eve and Emily, who were running with a group of zombies released from the Pandora's box, aiming to defeat them for additional bullet supplies. Despite the numerous monsters attacking Ryata, he was bound to run out of ammunition even with a large stock. With Eve and Emily's assistance in holding off the swarm of beetles pursuing Ryata, he managed to obtain enough additional bullets to defeat the beetle horde that Eve and Emily had been restraining. After clearing all the monsters on the third floor of the Silicon Dungeon, Ryata, who had been carrying Rosa, led them back outside to wait for Reyes, who coincidentally arrived just as Ryata and his companions emerged from the dungeon. Reyes, unable to do much due to the magical storm, felt pity for Rosa, who was severely injured. Ryata had prepared white-colored bullets, which were healing bullets that, when shot at a human, would heal wounds caused by monster attacks. While the healing effect was slow, the bullets were effective and managed to heal almost all of Rosa's wounds sustained on the third floor of the Silicon Dungeon during the magical storm. Ryata felt grateful that his experiment had gone well, and he repaid his curiosity about the Nihonium Dungeon which previously only dropped power seeds when he defeated zombies or skeletons inside. Eve, curious about the healing bullets, asked why they weren't used inside the silicon dungeon. Ryata explained that he didn't have the time to heal Rosa due to the pursuit by the swarming monsters. However, everything ended happily as the healing bullets successfully healed Rosa, and Reyes expressed his gratitude to Ryata for saving his companion. Impressed with Emily's decision to release the seed and lead the zombies towards Ryata, as Emily mimicked her usual experiment with dungeon drop items when placed outside the dungeon, Ryata invited Emily and Eve to have a meal outside. Emily declined, as she preferred cooking and sharing a meal at home with Ryata and Eve, cherishing those moments spent together indoors. Will there be new companions joining Ryata? Let's wait for what comes next. This is the end of episode 5. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss part 6 of this series recap.